measurable function. So now uh, we'll give the we'll see the equivalent equivalent definition for measurable function actually. So not only about this set, there are many other sets which is also measurable. Then we can say the function is actually measurable. So the following theorem will in, will tell. subset of R set of R the function R here function just then the following statements are equal. So first one is F is measurable. Second is for all A, R, the sets, X belongs to E, such that F of X less than or equal to A. Initially, we did, so measurable means it is less than A, but now we are saying if we consider this subset and those are measurable, then also uh, it is equivalent to say f is measurable or r measurable third one is so not if the sets the sets f so now it is less than or equal to. So now we will give equivalent of bigger than or equal to and bigger than those nodes. So, yes. F bigger than or equal to A or equivalently F bigger than A or measure. for every A. A belongs to R. Fourth definition is yeah, this this is also you can take it as a definition because those are equivalent. Suppose F is finite value that is range of F is not taking a plus infinity and minus infinity contains plus infinity and minus infinity then the sets instead of con consist uh, infinite set if we take finite set like a, a less than or equal to f less than or equal to b that is set of all x belongs to e such that a less than f of x less than b are measurable for every a comma b belongs to r so i will not give the detail of proof i mean uh, but i will give the sketch actually in how it follows because yeah, these are all equivalent so whichever way you want to define you can define a measurable function one among these actually not necessarily less than i mean you can take anything as a definition actually and uh, you can do the proofs which come next so sketch of the proof so one implies two that is f is measurable uh, then we want to say uh, this f is measurable implies this actually this is also measurable so uh, 
uh, we are going to do we are going to use the property of uh, measured uh, collection of all measurable set we already know countable union of measurable set is measurable and countable intersection of measurable set is measurable so we are going to use that idea so for every a so we assume that for every a we note that so kindly give me a second i will come back after this so within 2 3 second i will come okay sorry for the interruption so now what we are doing like for every a we note that uh, okay. we note that uh, this f plus that are equal to a we want to show f is measurable we assume we want to show this this uh, for every a this sets is measurable but it can be seen that for k equal to 1 to infinity if we take collect all the sets f less than a on by k this set so intersection of all these sets will be f less than or equal to a because all of this this all those sets contains a so uh, the intersection also contains a because uh, so we know that by definition of measurability uh, all all the sets of this form is measurable so therefore countable inter Section of measurable set is measurable. Hence, this set is measurable. So, therefore, one implies two. Now, we want to show two implies one, so that both are equal. And we have we are going to use similar thing there. We observe that f less than a equal to. So now. Uh, we are taking the union actually instead of section so if we take all the union it does uh, it does not contain a so i mean uh, so none of the sets contain a i mean so so union of this those sets is uh, clearly this f less than a because we are just taking f a f less than or equal to a minus 1 by k it is increasing set it will go up to a but it it does not contain a none of them are contain a so union also does not contain a so again countable union of uh, measurable set is measurable so this set is measurable so first definition and second definition are equal equivalent um, so now we want to show either 1 implies 3 or uh, 2 implies 3 that is enough so but uh, you see this is like if if we take complement of a first set then we will get this one i mean if we use f is measurable then if we take complement uh, f less than a then we get uh, complement of that set f bigger than a uh, we know that complement of measurable set is measurable so we are assuming the measurability of that set so complement also measurable so this this both the direction follows from the complement complementation property of measurements so yeah similarly fourth one also we if we use intersection and complement uh, we'll get this definition also this fourth uh, fourth equivalent also so i'm not giving the details of that actually this is quite similar to whatever we have done already so now we'll see some properties of measurable set i mean which class of functions are measurable uh, for example continuous functions are measurable like
now we'll discuss the proper um, properties of the vegetable set so the first property is uh, so actually uh, if f is finite valued it is enough to finite valued function f is measurable if and only if f inverse of o is measurable where o is open set for every open set and also it can be take like uh, close to set is measurable because uh, under complementation it will follow Measurable for every close to set here. Instead of taking this Borel uh, base of this Borel sets, I mean uh, the interval close to infinity, close to minus infinity, comma a, you can take any open set or closed set to check a finite valued function is measurable or not. So this is this property is that. I mean, if f is finite value, then if you only check if inverse in matrix uh, open set is measurable, then that's that's fine to say. That's enough to say measure. I mean, uh, the measurability of the function. So the second property, second property is I am not proving the first property, but I will prove all other properties. Suppose f is continuous on R, then F is measurable. This is the second subdivision one, and also not only that, if F is measurable and finite value. and another phi function is continuous continuous then phi of phi is of measurable not of phi is sorry this is phi Composition is not often is measurable. So one follows from the property one. Since the continuous functions are finite valued, so it does it does not have any discontinuity. So it won't take minus infinity and plus infinity. So. Uh, since continuous functions are finite valued, it is enough to see that uh, inverse image of open set is uh, open. Like so, I mean, uh, so if so inverse image of so if it is, it is enough to check uh, f inverse of O is measurable for all open set O. But uh, instead of all checking all open set, we are going to check only sub basis of it because uh, under countable intersection or union, it will generate all open sets. So subbasis means I always this interval. I mean infinite interval minus infinity comma. So then continuous functions are finite value. Consider only like f inverse of minus infinity, comma a. Um, so we know that uh, continuous function is equal to say like inverse image of open set is open. Since this set is open and f is continuous, f inverse of this set is open. So which is open, we know that all open sets are measurable, which we already 
proved actually by definition itself it follows an open session and hence so which is open and hence measurable so now we want to prove the second property that is we assume f is measurable function and finite value both we assume and phi is continuous and continuous means that function also finite value so now we want to show uh, phi composite f is measurable so we want to like it is enough to prove f composite uh, i mean phi composite f inverse of those uh, bases i mean minus infinity p comma a those are measurable actually so again so since phi is continuous uh, phi inverse of minus infinity comma a is an open set this is because phi is continuous uh, so we say the open set as o so denote by o therefore we if we consider phi composite f inverse of this sub of borders which is f inverse of phi inverse of minus infinity comma a so which is equal to so this inverse is o which is open set and we assume that f is finite valued so it is enough to i mean uh, therefore it is enough to check f inverse of o is measurable for all uh, measurable set actually i mean uh, so it follows from the definition of finite value uh, that it it is enough to check f inverse of uh, open set is measurable actually so since we assume f is finite value we we know that f inverse of o is measurable therefore uh, this this inverse i mean phi composite f inverse also measurable so this is measurable set actually by definition of f this follows from by definition of f uh, so i will write it clearly since we assume f is finite value and also measurable both we assume that yeah if is measurable and finite value both we assume so then by property one if inverse of o is measurable therefore We proved inverse of that's under phi composition if is measurable. So phi the function phi composite here is measurable. So this completes the proof of property two, and that property is very important to like when we do integrations. suppose the functions f and n equal to 1 to infinity sequence of function is a sequence of functions i mean we have to say measurable function otherwise so so functions all the functions we are considering are measurable measurable functions then Supremum of n, f of n, of x, and infimum of infimum over n, f n of x, comma, and limit supremum, limit supremum over n, of x. so we know that limit may not exist but limit supremum and limit infimum always exist actually so 
those are i mean if we assume sequence is measurable sequence of measure we consider sequence of measurable function then all these functions are measurable actually these are always exist and those functions are measurable to for proof i i think this also simply followed from countable union and finite and those things so we observe that supremum of f of n is measurable saying supremum of f of n is measurable is equivalent to Equivalent following things actually. So supremum of n. So this function we want to show this this particular function is measurable, but we observe that it is equivalent to say union of f. So the supremum is bigger than y, then all the function is bigger than y. I mean uh, so. So you, mm, so if sub, sub, uh, supremum of f n is bigger than y, some y, then necessarily like all other functions also, uh, those those point where supremum is, I mean, set of all x belongs to domain of f, say say e such that supremum over n f n of x is bigger than y is same as saying all the functions f n such that f n of x is bigger than y so therefore their union also bigger than y in those points so these two sets are equal actually and we assumed that f n is measurable so this set is measurable and countable union of measurable set is measurable so this set is also measurable i'll write simply is measurable this set is measurable. and so for proving second one infimum of f it is like follow from this this step itself actually uh, sir i have a single doubt here ah uh, yeah right. sir you have defined supremum of fn for n uh, for each point like it was a supremum for fn uh, when we take a point x so i oh. will uh, like uh, for different different x i will assume the new function fx uh, oh, or yeah. gx right supremum oh. like that right yeah Yeah, so, yeah, those also happen. So supremum of f n itself a function actually. I mean, uh, a defined point wise, right? At a, yeah, point wise, point wise. Uh, it's not a. I mean, it's not the particular function, but those set. I mean, set of all x belongs to E, where supremum is bigger than E. E, there all other functions also. I mean, satisfies in the particular point. All other functions also bigger than E, uh, because I mean, it is. Um, yeah we because supremum is bigger than y i mean all other image of x i mean fn at x so uh, it is so, true for yeah. all n like you have put here or n so uh, is it true like supremum of fn is greater than a so uh, is it true for all n yeah or it is true for yeah. so if you write in that way you can see like uh, union over n set of all x belongs to e such that f n of x bigger than a so so this particular uh, so i mean yes uh, supremum is like uh, i mean uh, this sequence may converge to some point uh, uh, i mean the numerical sequence f n of x evaluated at x yes. r l it is like this uh, i mean it can be any sequence i mean it is numerical sequence Mm -hmm. That particular point you are taking supremum, yes, and that is bigger than y. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, that is bigger than y. So, uh, okay, so I should not take bigger than y. I think I should take less than y. That, yeah, that is what you want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah I think I just misunderstood. I mean, Thank you for
for limit supremum and limit infimum so we are just going to use the definition limit supremum is actually infimum of supremum of supremum over n n bigger than or equal to k f n actually so it's like uh, we are taking collecting supremum of f n for n bigger than or equal to k then taking infimum over k so it follows from the previous one actually so i will give the description actually i will not write detail but i just write limit supremum and limit infimum also follows similarly from the or two observation so the observation is this limit supremum and the tends to infinity f n of x equal to infimum over k set up by supremum of n bigger than or equal to k f n and also limit infimum means n tends to infinity f n of x supremum over k supremum over k but uh, infimum of n bigger than or equal to k so hence like uh, so we proved supremum infimum so similarly this also follow so i just write hence this is measurable as supremum and supremum hence measurable as the above Now we'll see the fourth property of the measurable. So, also for C. Collection. Measurable function. And so here limit exists actually. Suppose limit. n tends to infinity f n of x exists and equal to f of k then f is measured so proof is uh, follow from property three because so if limit exists then limit equal to limit infimum and limit infimum so limit infimum and limit exists supremum and limit infimum always exist so if limit exists means those two are equal actually but we already see, uh, saw in the property 3 that limit infimum and limit supremum are always measurable so uh, from that property follows like uh, limit this also measurable. if limit exists that function also that function also measurable then this process so limit infimum limit supremum So it x the n tends to infinity. So limit 
ఇంతిమమా చెప్పండి ఓటర్ చెప్పండి intersection those properties i'll i'll just state the property but will not give the proof f power k k bigger than or equal to 1 or measure so f and f plus g and f plus g are measurable if both f and g are finite values that's a uh, this is a bit so for if f and g are taking infinite value then also we can show but it needs some other assumption so if it is finite value then f plus g and f plus g both are measurable finite so i'm not giving the details of proof of this property so uh, but i'll define something else which is almost everywhere proper I mean, definition of almost everywhere in the sense of measure actually so which is very useful that so we, we can understand right after defining it so it's very important Uh, sir before you go there sir i want to ask like uh, where the limit function you take a point wise limit right yeah so so uh, is it true for uniform also uniform limits point wise limit is true in uniform yeah of course true actually uh, I, i i think like um, because the norms are continuous and the composition is continuous through that i you can so that actually uh, if point wise limit so i mean uniform limit i mean uniformly convergence means it is very strong condition yeah 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 like we have a point wise uh i mean that i think you don't need to go that like it also followed by that i mean this con- convergence you don't know I mean, whether it may be uniform or it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it can be point wise and the uh, uh, uh point wise is self fine at then also yeah. f is not yeah. okay so a property or a state or statement is said to be said to hold or prove almost everywhere in a to a the almost everywhere uh in the short form we used to write a dot it is true or false on a set of measures so for example we can 
take this example. Um, so if two functions are uh, equal almost everywhere means uh, they are so, so wherever the set of all points where those functions are not equal. So that is like if two measurable functions f and g defined on a certain way. So both are function from E to R are equal almost everywhere. equivalent f of x equal to g of x almost everywhere for all i mean for x belongs to the norm everywhere for x if so where they are not equal sir this set of all x belongs to such that f of x has measure zero. So m of it is measure zero. It has measure zero. Then, so otherwise we can say just measure zero because outer measure zero means those are measure zero. Okay. That we already any study. So yeah, this this definition uh, gives like uh, so we, we want, I want to give a remark about the properties which we defined previously in terms of almost everywhere. So remark if f is measurable and f equals to g almost everywhere, then g is also measurable. Actually, this is this we can actually this, this follows from the follows from if we consider f less than a, g less than so. For measurability, we have to show this set is measurable for all a. So we know that f is measurable, and we want to say this set is measurable for all a. But uh, so this is differ by a set of measure zero because otherwise, I mean, all other sets they are agree. I mean, they are equal. So this two sets differ differ by set of measure zero. So measure zero sets are I mean, those are measurable. So Differ by a set of measure zero, so we can say c is also we mentioned above um, can be relaxed to the condition holding almost everything. So instead of defining all x, it is converging, and uh, we can say only f and converges to f almost everywhere, then also. The limit is measurable. So I will like what I am saying is if we can write property for like this also for almost every if it's a collection. And limit n times the infinity. F n of x, f of x, almost even. Then also f is measurable. Not necessarily this convergence for almost every x. This is all the properties of the measurable function. Now I will talk about the little wood three principle. Maybe these things are new to you actually. So whatever I'm doing till now is like maybe familiar to everyone. 
this may, may know, but uh, these are like, uh, I mean, very interesting properties. So I want to mention this talk about these properties. I mean, so which connects measurable sets and measurable functions with the, uh, I mean, tools already we have in analysis, actually, like continuous uniform convergence with everything, like X, with this new notion. So, so I will give these three principles. So, uh, which connects that um, sets of sets which have nice properties really, are functions which are nice, I mean, like continuous functions, and convergence, which is very nice, nicely convergent, I mean, uniformly convergent. Like, so uh, these three properties will connect every other functions, I mean, every other sets to sets are functions with which has very nice properties. That's why. Like I want to give these three principles, but uh, this is not the description. I mean, we I, we will discuss this clearly. I mean later, actually after giving this three. Things. So every function is nearly continuous, and we don't know what is the word nearly means. Actually, we have to define it clearly. And that principle. Every conversion is nearly uniform. Conversion. So, yeah, so we have to be so cautious about and um, about the word nearly, which is actually a catch. Um, so, so the like uh, before that, I want to mention the functions and sets here uh, referred are actually measurable sets and measurable functions, only those actually. So, um, and so we will understand, so we will give the precise version of these three principles as, as following, following theorem. Mm, yeah, so I will state the theorem one, so which is actually first principle, elaborate the first principle. So, if measure of is then there exists finite union. So, in the set, set of finite measures, uh, then we have this property actually. There exists a finite union of I mean, uh, intervals, uh, say uh, we denote it F equal to union of J equal to 1 to N, IJ of open intervals. I mean, uh, IJs are opening. Such that measure of So we could have started with epsilon actually. For any epsilon bigger than zero, this is true actually. So if E is a measure of finite sets, then for every epsilon bigger than zero, there exists a finite union of intervals such that measure of E symmetric difference, F is less than epsilon. I want to say what is this symmetric difference? So I will write. E symmetric difference, F means uh, E minus F set difference. E minus F union F minus E. Both the sets, that's the union of both the difference. That is what symmetric difference. So it is like uh, differing uh, from union of intervals. Like, so I mean, the very small part in, sen in the sense of measure is outside of this union of open intervals. That's what the first property says. Every set is nearly finite union of intervals. And this proof is uh, like, very easy, we can do this proof. And for other two principles, uh, proof is like quite 
difficult so those proof i give but i will try to do uh, try to give a proof for this first test for every a figure like this i mean or so i am writing like measurable form so we have to start with epsilon for every epsilon bigger than 0 given or given epsilon choose a covering of integer covering of e covering of e such that it satisfies following thing so covering means this uh, union cover b and uh so like so this is uh, follows from outer measure actually we can find such an cover actually because this is follows from the definition of infimum that for any epsilon we can find you uh, cover such that their length of sum of their length is just less than or equal to epsilon i mean epsilon by 2 so this is follows from definition of infimum we can always find such a cover since e is measurable Yeah. So otherwise, we should write out. So we we have such cover. So now we know that like E is a measurable set with finite measure. So we are going to use that since M of E is less than infinity. Uh, so measure is finite. So uh, the any if you take any coverings so their sum also converges to finite number so this since this converges to, i mean this is uh, the this series is actually converges so using this graph so we can write actually series i summation okay converges and therefore right we have like there exists a large n after that the summation n plus 1 to infinity length of the interval is less than epsilon by 2 so we can like since it is convergent so after a finite stage uh, those infinitely many sums has to be small actually so this is follows from the definition of convergence so now we we know how to do cf because uh, like so this is very small so rest rest of the finite part we can do the cf so our aim is to find the finite union of interval uh, and so that the measure of symmetric distance e symmetric distance f is less than epsilon so this that's what we choose f equal to union of j equal to 1 to n i j then so we want to calculate mesh so i mean e e minus n f and f minus e those are disjoint actually so therefore we can have by countable additivity of mesh the measure we can write it like this f minus e and so e minus f is like rest of intervals uh, so this is finite interval so that is the uh, this part is less than or equal to measure of other union of other intervals j equal to n plus 1 infinity ij and m of uh, so this we can write f uh, as that as we define minus this union minus so we know that the measure of this is less than or equal to so union so this time yeah, i mean uh, it may not be this time so this is less than or equal to summation j equal to n plus 1 to infinity ij plus summation j equal to 1 uh, okay ij okay sorry, sorry. Not infinity. 
then minus measure up. And uh, this is less than epsilon by definition of convergence we had, and less than epsilon by two. And this difference is less than epsilon since we choose the covering such a way. Actually, if we minus this, then this is also less than epsilon. Less than or equal to epsilon by two. So get epsilon by two. Total is epsilon. So which we want to prove us. So the first principle is true. So now we will see the uh, second principle. But uh, before that, we will discuss that principle actually. I mean, second principle, proof of the second principle follows from the that principle. So we'll just try to give description of that principle, and then we define what is second principle. So this theorem two. Uh, this is called Egerov theorem. So this is actually that. So it is about the sequence of functions uh, which converge. Well, then I mean, after, except some set, it converges uniformly. For this, suppose if k. Sequence of function. Sequence of measurable. Defined on the set. It's finite measurable. Not me. So now we assume that uh, f k is converges to f point wise al almost everywhere, everywhere on p. E. So then, for any given epsilon, epsilon zero, we can find a closed set. A epsilon such that measure of E minus A epsilon and the convergence restricted to the points of E is okay. F converge uniformly. This subset A, but this differs by like uh, we can make this that set very close to E. That's what this statement. So nearly all the convergence is uniformly convergent, like except measure. I mean, very small set. I mean, how small A one is. So this is the third principle. Now second principle is. Using theorem. So now this is about continuous function. So every function is nearly continuous. So how what this is mean? Right. Suppose f is measurable. Finite measure. So we have then for your three. Of 
However, uh, we are not saying that uh, the standard assertion f is continuous defined on E continuous at all the points of f of E. So we are not saying that actually, but we are saying the restriction. I mean, so if we consider f defined only on f of E, then it continuous on those points. So that's what I want to mean here. So I will write here. However, here. So now we see some function which is not measurable. So we have seen the class of measurable functions. And before that, I want to ask: like, uh, monotone function is measurable. Can you prove? Can anyone give the uh, that monotone function is? Okay, so then I'll I'll try to do. Sir, every monotone function is con uh, like has a countable number of discontinuities, so uh, that's why the set at which they are uh, non-continuous has a major zero. But uh, there may be a shift actually, like you cannot obstruct. Yeah, it's uh, except uh, countable set, measure zero set, it is continuous. That is true. Um, yeah, but uh, so this is not so. But you cannot make it 
uh, okay so yeah if it f equal to g almost everywhere then it follows from that property like if f is measurable then g is measurable yeah correct thank you so and, yeah and and such your voice has so much disturbance sometimes so we couldn't hear you properly i'm sorry to point oh. out oh okay okay so you could have tell me the before i mean uh, yeah okay sorry about that like i'll try to speak uh, clearly like uh, i hold okay. Sorry. Very monotonous function, measurable. So the proof follows whatever he said actually. By said. otherwise, you can take if you consider this set f less than a, like set of all x such that f of x less than a. This is actually interval. That is also you can see. So an interval is measurable. Uh, we already see. So this follows from. Like like this also like any proof is so uh, so what about the non measurable function so before talking about the non measurable function first uh, first I will give example of a non measurable set I may not prove that set is non measurable but I will give the give you the construction but you can go and read any book uh, like about Proof of non measurability of that particular set. So that set is called Vitali set. Usually they call this set as a Vitali set. Um, so non existence of non measurable set. I'll, uh, so the this is just application of axiom, axiom of choice. So I will assume axiom of choice essentially. So then I will do the construction. So we take interval, closed interval 0, 1, and we are going to define a relation tilde on uh, closed interval 0, 1. So we say x related to y whenever, whenever x minus y is rational. So if two number belongs to close to interval zero comma one related, if their difference is rational, so then this is easy to see. I mean, it is easy to see that tilde is equivalence relation. We should see that tilde is equivalence relation. M equivalence relation. Since I mean uh, x minus x is zero, that is reflex. So that is rational. So it is reflexive. So x minus y is rational. Y minus x is also rational. And transitivity follows from the addition. Addition of two rational numbers is rational. So uh, this is a equivalence relation. And we know that equivalence relation partitions uh, give, given set uh, into equivalence classes. Uh, so then we can write it uh, the set closed interval zero comma one. As union of equivalence classes, so we call each equivalence classes about uh, of alpha is E alpha. Actually, E alpha denotes the equivalence class of alpha. So, yeah. Now, so we uh, now we construct the set. Now we construct the set N. Which is non measurable set by which n by, by application of choosing exactly one element x alpha from each e alpha. And we take union of all these points actually. and setting n equal to union over alpha x alpha. So this can be done by axiom of choice actually, choosing a point from I mean, one point from the each set. This is uncountable actually. Like uh, so, 
the difference of difference is rational so each class is countable but uh, the number of equivalence classes are uncountable so we are choosing one from each so this set is also uncountable but uh, uh, we can prove that this this is actually non measurable this particular the set n is not measurable so i'm not going to prove this fact actually like um yeah so i suggest you to read by one like you can take it exercise and you read from the book so but i want to construct a non measurable function using this non measurable set actually like what is the natural choice um, can you guess such so how we can construct a non measurable function using so we know the definition of measurable function so something should be non measurable then we have to say uh, the set for some a there exist a belongs to r so function is defined on some set e to r then f of a belongs to r uh, so there exists a belongs to r such that f less than a or f bigger than a is not measurable so we have to say this so what what might be the natural choice for non measurable can yeah, anyone can suggest characteristic function on this n node okay yeah so n is the non measurable set which defined as above so we are taking a characteristic function maybe we write uh, zero one because it is lies between i mean uh, so yeah anyway we can define in r also so problem is so chi of n of x equal to 1 if x belongs to n 0 other way so if we choose uh, f less than i mean f bigger than or equal to 1 or f bigger than 1 by 2 whatever fine so then that set won't be measurable because that only contains n so if for any number between 0 and 1 um, so we say 1 by 2 so if we take set of all x belongs to r such that f of x is bigger than half is equal to n which is not measurable as we think n so this function is also this particular function is also not measurable okay so uh, so in next class i will uh, do integration theory so we are ready for that actually like we define simple function then uh, we define integral for bounded function then we compare with riemann integration uh, the uh, the integral we are going to define and so yeah so that we will do in the next class so now uh, we are so for this 15 minutes we will solve some problem maybe so i'll ask the question so does there exist Uh, open dense subset of R of finite measure or any given finite number as a measure. Finite, okay, exterior measure if not need to, it may not be measure. But we can prove that depending so does there exist a open dense subset of r which has finite exterior measure or finite exterior measure? so can you construct such a set actually 
so open dense set means like uh, so if it, so that set is open and if you take closure of it it is equal to r so is there such a, i mean it is possible to construct such a set so any idea like uh, for the starting and beginning so i may give the hint actually we have to go start with uh, rational numbers rational numbers so and try to enumerate it actually so since rational is countable so we are enumerating rational number as rn n equal to 1 so rational set is dense set dense set dense subset of r any set which contains rational number is also dense subset so but we want to we have to ensure that this is open or not so i'll give you uh, example of uh, open dense subset so complement of any finite set is dense in r uh, open open and dense in r and that follows from like uh, finite intersection of open set is in from that i mean if you remove one point it is open and you take finite intersection and then you can take complement of cantor set because cantor set is closed so complement is open so cantor set is, has measure zero but that set has infinite measure so that will not i mean uh, shoot for like what we are searching so we have to construct somehow which has finite measure so if you have geometrical intuition it won't work here actually mostly in measure theory we have to do analytic calculation so okay so for for any epsilon bigger than 0 we can write like this actually we can consider this as a open set which is union n equal to 1 to infinity interval rn minus 1 by epsilon by 2 power n plus 2 comma or n plus 1 also is plus 2 power so i mean uh so as n varies this this is also varying actually uh, the denominators also i mean length of the intervals also varying so this is open set and this contains rational number so this must be dense okay so this is open and dense now we have to see uh, this has finite measure so we have to like using we are, we are going to use countable subadditivity actually so measure outer measure of o equal to is less than or equal to so this is actually union of open interval so this must be measurable because uh, i mean every open set is measurable so this is measurable so outer measure or measure both are equal actually. so by countable subadditivity this is less than or equal to n to the infinity epsilon by 2 to the power n plus 1 so then you get uh, so this is like you can take n n plus 1 it's i mean so you are going to sum not like two times so it will become n plus 1 so then it's like around epsilon so in fact you can construct uh, any so it is not small epsilon i mean any positive real number you can construct uh, measure less than that particular real number actually i mean open dense set of uh, out whose measure is less than that particular real number actually find it instead of just find it you can exactly give a bound for the measure of the particular open set you can open dense set yeah so any doubt till now so i am going to stop here maybe so i will give uh, i will do integration theory in the next class uh, so i'll just uh, introduce the 
the, like some functions, which is the building blocks of integration theory called simple functions. So then I start to define integration for that particular function. From that, I will define other functions like bounded functions. And then, uh, yeah, like functions, uh, non-negative functions, then we can do any general function. Like step by step, we can define integration for functions. Uh, yeah, sir, one is... doubt I have. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In theorem, uh, where you little out three principles uh, in uh, the theorem one, uh, could uh, you just go there, uh, please? Yeah, for the... yeah, I will. <clears throat> yes, sir, here, here, uh, here uh, where, at, at the last, actually, at the last, last where okay. you use uh, less than a. So, uh, uh, since uh, epsilon j, j is equal to n plus 1 to infinity, that is uh, less than epsilon by 2, since we have quoted. But uh, what, how do you get the other epsilon by 2, actually? Uh, yeah, because uh, we assume we constructed the uh, interval. I mean, we choose the coverings in such a way that the covering of uh, the length of the interval, some of the length of the interval is less than measure of e plus epsilon by 2. So, if you subtracted measure of yeah, e, yeah, then yeah. That, that, that. epsilon by 2. So, yeah, actually this is possible because uh, measure is actually infimum of all these coverings. So, this is by definition of infimum actually. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so any other doubt? So, if not, then I will stop the presenting. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I think, sir. Yeah. We'll see you in the next, uh, yeah. next class. Yeah, okay, ma'am. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah.